Thank you. All right, y'all, welcome back to another episode of MCA, man. Today, we're going to try to talk to you guys a little bit about the Texas rig. Um, one of my favorite ways to fish. Uh, one of my favorite ways to fish is kind of like how you got started uh, throwing those long 10-inch uh, red shag and June bug type worms. Uh, to now, today, man, with Texas rig, you got a big variation of ways you can Texas rig uh bass fish which i think is extremely cool um i like to flip with it and you can also do some slow dragging so uh typically anytime that you're looking to try like do some texas rig type fishing it's kind of more of a finesse type type tactic um and so it puts you in a position to kind of like slow down and kind of process and get an idea of what's around you um get an idea of the structures that's down below uh you're looking for anything that you can feel any anything any type of uh, uh object or, or or tree branch or you know even rocks um you want to try and get down there um and just kind of drag that bait along or either hop it along uh, i'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about all of it and, and, and a lot of people always say well jeff how does this apply directly over in life skills and so i always say that anytime you're dealing with fishing it relates right and so if i'm birthed to do some finesse fishing or whatever um as i'm as i'm finesse fishing again as i'm looking for these small little details of things it's just like life anytime you're going through a situation circumstances or anything you want to try and pull out the fine details you want to try and know you know understand what you're looking for and why you're looking for it and the results of whatever it is once you be able to find that object and so that's what i, I you know that so for me fishing and life Kind of go hand in hand, all right? So that's that part. All right, so typically you try to start this thing with, you know, I always say, <clears throat> all right, so first of all, let's talk about the rod here. Um, I'm not really sponsored by a rod company necessarily at this point, so I kind of got a variations of rods that I use. Um, I have two ducats. Um, majority of my rods are art rods though. I have um, probably about seven or eight of them. Um, they're all arc rod. This so happened to be one of the Lacen series of the Pro. Um, it's a seven three. Uh, it's a heavy action rod. Um, I got an Abu Garcia seven to one gear ratio on it. I got seventeen pound P line. Seventeen pound P line four carbon is what the line of choice that I got. Um, typically, you know, anywhere between fifteen and twenty usually be. A good balance i like to try and stay in that middle um depending if i gotta go above you know 17 then i'm probably just gonna go to break that just count me all right but let's get to the texas rig first thing i like to try and do when i get a texas when i start my texas rig setup is a bobber stopper uh these bobber stoppers here are basically designed to kind of keep your bait in place um keep your bait from going up and down keep it very compact all right so here we got, put it down through the hole, all right? And just pull it through, just like that. And then you got it on there. Next thing you wanna try and do real quick, just pull it up to give yourself some room. And then next we take our bullets that way. I always say, I always say, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm tying on a Texas rig, I'm either going, um, 316 um, to uh, 3A's um, are, is typically the weight sizes I'm going to throw when throwing my Texas rig. I'm going with a 316 um, or um, I'm going as high as uh, a 3A's. Um, and then obviously you kind of balance out where what weight size you need in between those sizes um, when you're trying to do finesse fishing. So that's kind of how I use it with my Texas rig. So let's go ahead on and put my 316th on just because this is my Cinco. So I want something that's. I got a four out Gamma Gatsu hook. Pretty much what I use. Um, I pretty much get them by the pack. Four out. I always go with the four out with my Cinco style baits. As you guys see, it's wide gap. You typically go with a wide gap too. Um, 
And then for me, I'm real simple, y'all. Um, it works for me. I just do the measly, you know, nine, 10 twists, whatever. I loop my, I loop my line in between. And people are gonna, gonna judge me by seeing this, but it works for me. So whatever works for you. You always gotta wet it though. For whatever reason, that part works. And it locks it in. Don't use your teeth either. That's not cool. Oh. All right, so now I got Bobber Stopper 316th weight for our hook. See that weight stop? You want that weight to stop. Close it down, now your weight don't go nowhere. So now when you're moving your bait, it looks like one action instead of two different actions. Sometimes you might want two different actions though. Uh, oh, so Texas rig, it's real simple. Okay, you're gonna go in to the top, right to the tip of your hook. Okay, you wanna try to keep that bait as straight as possible. That's the whole goal of this thing, right? See how straight it is now? When I finish here, it, it needs to look just as straight. Okay, so you pop through, and then you push that hook all the way down and through, and you pull it out the back side. I always say pull it out until that Nike check pops out the back. All right, so you see that? And then from there, get you a good measuring as to the bottom of your hook. And then you go down, put through. Here's the cool part, the best part. Gotta make that bait straight. I wanna try to make that bait straight as possible. And that's your Texas rig. All right. That's your Cinco style Texas rig. All right. Now, again, you don't necessarily have to use 15, 17, 20 pounds. You can go down as low as, you know, 12. Just kind of just depending on where you at, you know, what part of the world you're in, what you're kind of doing here in Florida. You're going to probably use 15, 17 to 20 and then jumping to braid, just depending on what type of fishing you're doing. But typically, this 15 full carbon pretty much works. So if I did work to put a little bit heavier weight on there, let me show you guys. Show you guys. So, all right, so on this piece, this is probably, I would definitely go, I would take my three, I'm not gonna, I'm not, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna take my 316th off in this case, but in this case, if I was just gonna be flipping a Texas style bait, um, I would put a heavier weight on, probably a 5 8 or a 3 8 ounce, um, and then I will still go with the fluorocarbon in a Texas style format. And so you'll take that cross style bait and basically the same, typically the same type of hook. I would change hooks on, in, on in, in this type of, you know, circumstances. I would definitely go with a flipping hook instead of a wide gap. Although wide gaps do work. Um, I've seen them be efficient as well. I, I just think that the flipping um, setup is, you know, set up for D style baits in my opinion. A little bit better, give it a little bit more of a, 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 a original action, if you would ask me. Uh, but same style, you're gonna rig it the same way, take it up, down, through, bring that Nike check out, and then now, you know, you got a flipping profile. This is definitely one of my favorite ways to fish, y'all. I, I absolutely um, love to fish, man, in a, in a flipping format. Um, anybody know me, know, you know, this is my. This is my thing right here. Um, I super, super love it. One cool thing I love about it is just the fact that, man, it just simply catch fish, bro. You know, no matter what. Even when it's hard, even when it's difficult, it just catch fish, man. I hope you guys learned something from the video today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Appreciate it. Um, how to Texas rig. That's what we talked about today. Hope you guys learned something. Um, Good times to do it. Let's talk about it real quick. Good times to do it. Um, I always say right after that morning bite, 
um, you pretty much at that point got all day to pretty much finesse fish, man. Flip, you know, drag a worm, whatever. Once that sun get up and, and the fish go to slowing down a little bit, pick it up, man. Um, it's what I do. Um, early in the morning, you know, I'm throwing moving baits all morning. I'm trying to get a, a, a high explosive reaction. Um, late in the afternoon, I'm trying to do the same thing. But when that temperature is, when that sun gets right and, and you know that the temperature is starting to change a little bit, whether it get hot or whether it's cold, um, pick that pick that finesse tactic bait up and, and, and slow yourself down and, you know, understand what you're looking for, what you're feeling for, what you're trying to uh, get around or be around, looking for any type of structure you can find. Um, typically, bass usually relate to some form of structure. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys, you know, Got something from it today. I'm MCA though, man. I thank you guys for watching again. I appreciate you guys and uh, see you guys for the next round. Deuces.